Hello and welcome to my YouTube live broadcasting. God bless everybody who just joined in. Hope everybody is doing fine. Hope you're okay. Thank you for joining in. Let me ask you if the sound is good. Can you hear me guys? Is my sound loud and clear? Please let me know if the sound is loud and clear. Give me a one please. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect. So the sound is okay. Perfect. Thank you, guys. So, God bless everybody. Today we wanted to do another live show. Uh, yesterday, if you noticed, uh, was my first live show after a one long month. Uh, I had to deal with some personal issues in my life and... Thanks to the Lord, it all went okay. I'm still having a cold, so maybe you can hear from my voice. I'm still not 100%, but hey, uh, that does not hold us back to do another live show. And I hope and I ask the Lord that he will uh, guide us with his Holy Spirit through today's teaching. And I hope we will have some nice, respectful Muslims who have the courage and the knowledge to call us live on Skype after we are finished with our teaching. So, <clears throat> by this I want to say to everybody, it's showtime! Welcome, thank you for joining in. Before we start, I wanted to uh, pray like we always do, so God can help us and give us some guidance to have a nice live show again, yet again. So please pray with me in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, please forgive our daily sins and guide us to forgive others who might curse us or persecute us because we are followers of your Holy Son, Jesus Christ. Please, Lord, please give us the courage and wisdom today to overcome lies, deceptions, or taqiyya by some very respectful Muslims. Please, Lord, enfold us in your arms. Fill us with your Holy Spirit that we might reflect your light within this dark, sad world. And that we speak your word with boldness and draw others to your feet, Lord. We ask this through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Please, Lord, give us the courage today and always to do whatever, whatever needs to be done for the truth, because only the truth prevails. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen, Amen. So, like we said, on this live broadcast, guys, we will have the opportunity to do a nice teaching. And today we're going to talk about some amazing facts in Islam, i.e. how the Prophet of Islam, for example, practiced slavery, how he owned slaves, and we will also investigate some other amazing facts and discoveries in Islam. Last but not least, when I finish my teaching today, we will have a nice Q&A session in the end with our guests in the live chat or if there are some Muslims, uh, they are also allowed to call in. Uh, we will see if um, I will allow also Christians to call us live on Skype. It depends if we have Muslims, Muslim guests who will have the first advantage to call us live because you know we need the Muslims to join in also uh, because they are the ones who are in need right so in other words you can ask me questions about today's teaching and I will try to answer as far as I can in the Q&A session my Skype ID is the Rob Christian Thank you for joining in guys, let us start today's teaching.
Before we start, I want to ask you to not forget to subscribe and smash that like button. Also, click on the notification bell to receive notifications when I go live or upload videos. For some reason, I don't know what it is, but for some reason, YouTube not always sends uh, notifications. So, just for certainty, always make sure to click on the notification bell. So, like I said, today is going to be about the amazing facts of Islam. You know, Muslims are so proud people, right? They are so proud about Islam and they love to talk about the ama some amazing facts and miracles, right? The Quran is a miracle. Muhammad is the best of example. He's the one to follow. So let us see, guys, what kind of amazing teaching Muhammad had. And let us see if he is truly a prophet or not. All right? So, I wanted to talk, like I said, about slavery in Islam today. Because I think this topic is never enough to discuss or talk about, right? It's really a disgusting thing to have a slave in your house, right? I mean, they are humans, right? You, you, I mean, you can't even treat a, a pet as a slave today. I mean, even a pet, a dog or a cat, let's say, have rights. What about human beings, right? Human beings, creation of God. Are we supposed to be slaves or own slaves? Now, some people will say, some Muslims will say, hey, you know, slavery, it's always have been started in the West. It's, it has been done by very rich Western people, like the Dutch people. As you see here in front of you, uh, the Dutch people, a couple hundred years ago, they were the ones who were actually having the lead in buying slaves from Africa and selling them to countries like America and Caribbean and whatnot. You know, you know the basically the the background story, right? So here as you see this is basically inside a ship and you see the slave owners here uh, here on top and the black slaves you see very naked and whatnot very very uh, horrible uh, situations and some of them because you know when you are for months on the sea like this you won't get enough uh, uh, food or variety in food especially if you are missing vitamin c your your teeth will uh, fall out right so some of a lot of slaves not some a lot of slaves even died during the, uh, the transport, right? And they threw them simply in the in the ocean, right? Very, very disgusting, very uh, horrible uh, situation that the poor slaves had to deal with because of money. It's all about money, power, and whatnot, right? So I, I asked Prophet Google, right? I asked Prophet Google to for a nice map and to see how the slave trading actually started and how it proceeded. So as you see here, this is the African slave uh, trade by the Dutch people. Uh, and you, when we say to the Muslims, how, can you tell me how, how it actually started? How, how did the uh, slave trade came to ex existence? And as you see, let's say the Dutch people came from Europe here, right? And they went to Africa to get the slaves with their very large ships, as you saw on, on the picture. And they went on land. And where did they go? They went to the Islamic countries, the countries that were under control of the Arab. You see Arab, Arab, all, 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 all that you can see are owned by all of Arabs, right? By Muslims. So they went to the slave masters who were the Arabs. And they bought the slaves from the Arab Muslims. And then they went all the way down here, here, and they started to transport the bought slaves from the Arab Muslims. Right? 
they were the biggest slave traders, the Arab Muslims. Muhammad himself owned slaves and sold slaves, right? So <laughs> they got the slaves from the Muslims and they transported them, as you see, to North uh, America and South America. Did you, do you see it? To, to the Caribbean, I think here is the Caribbean, right? Here's somewhere here. Yeah, here. Jamaica, you see Kingston, Cuba. This is why you see also dark people in Brazil. This is Brazil, right? Right, so these were actually people that came from Africa, slaves from Africa. Yeah, so it's, you know, I, I'm, yeah, I'm talking, Sean, I'm talking about the slavery, right? So it happened basically here. Uh, they also went to to uh, Indonesia and whatnot for uh, pepper and other uh, spices, right? But mainly the, the slave trading happened from Africa to this, this part of the world, to these continents. So the Dutch people, the rich Dutch slave traders, they bought the slaves from the Muslims, right? You can deny it. this is historical fact. So Muslims, don't be a hypocrite. You're the ones who sold the slaves, the black slaves, to the rich Dutch people who basically controlled the whole world. Dutch people were really, really powerful back then. They even, for a very small period, they even owned America. The Dutch people, they traded America with the English, right? New York was called New Amsterdam. Maybe not many people know about this, but you see many um, uh, <clears throat> cities are named after uh, Dutch, other Dutch cities, right? So, yeah. And the proof is in front of you. So, if we going to uh, talk about the Islamic slavery, you can find it back in the Quran, chapter 4, ayah 24, chapter 33, ayah 50. Those you, what your right hand possesses, those are the slave girls that Muslims captured in their battles with non-Muslims. They took the women, they killed the, the men, like you see, like, exactly like you see here. You see, those are poor ladies. They killed their husbands, they killed their fathers, their uncles. And they came back. Look what I found. Look how beautiful these women. Yeah? I.e. your sex slaves. And. No Muslim can deny this. It's in the Quran. Are you telling me the Quran's daif? Habibi. Is the Quran daif? Daif Quran. Yeah. So as you see. It's a historical fact. It's also in the Quran. And if we go to this website, this is islamqna.info. This is the number one Salafi website online. I kid you not. Salafi Sunni website. And the general supervisor, the, the sheikh, the imam of this website is called Sheikh Muhammad Al-Munajjid. Sheikh Muhammad Al-Munajjid. And he's answering questions. He's issuing fatwas when someone asks a question. Someone on this website, a Muslim, asked a question about the slavery. You know, we Christians always talk about the Islamic slavery. So this guy has a question. What should we answer the Christians? What should we answer to someone like Rob Christian or David Wood or Christian Prince or Sam Shimon? Well, look what the Sheikh is, is answering. The Sheikh says, this is one of the basic principles of Islam. What? Slavery is one of the basic principles of Islam. When the question is asked, why does Islam permit slavery? Look what he's going to say. Guys, pay attention. Take notes. This is a sheikh talking. We reply empathetically and without shame. So the sheikh said, I'm not ashamed. Without any shame that slavery is permitted in Islam till today. Slavery is okay. It's okay to own slaves in Islam. Till today. Yes, I can give you the link. No problemo. Is that a hard question? 
So till today, it's okay to own slaves in Islam. And just go to a country like Saudi Arabia or any, any uh, Arabic Islamic country where you have Sharia law. These people, especially the rich ones, they own slaves, they beat slaves. I mean, just go on YouTube, see how they are beating. Without any shame, Islam permits slavery, the Sheikh is saying. Hey, Habibi, shlonak anta? I know who, who that guy is. Hey, Habibi, salam al Masih. Um, so, the thing is, the Sheikh is proud about it. Right? Especially his cause, exactly. And if we go and do some research about Muhammad himself, Muhammad owned slaves. And here's a list of names of slaves that Muhammad himself owned. These are the names of Muhammad's male slaves. These are the male slaves. Right? These are only the male slaves. Look how many slaves Muhammad himself owned. Right? I, I can't even count so many in there. Those are only the ones who are known by name. What about the ones that he owned with that their names are not mentioned? Right? Muhammad's made slaves. These are the, the women. Are Selma Um Rafi. Maymuna, daughter of Abu Asib. Maymuna, look how many women he, this guy owned as sex slaves. These are the sex slaves, these are... No, no, those are not even, maybe not even the, the sex slaves. Oh yes, they are the sex slaves. Captured in war. These are the male slaves. I mean, one guy needs to own such, so many slaves. What are you going to do with so many slaves, man? Muhammad not only owned slaves, he also bought more slaves than he sold. He even sold and bought slaves. Muhammad had many male and female slaves. He used to buy and sell them, but he purchased more slaves than he sold, especially after Allah empowered him by his message, as well as after his immigration from Mecca. He once sold one black slave for two. His name was Yaqub al-Mudbir. I mean, we have also the name. Muslim can't say this is uh, a false story. No, even the name of the slave is known. He purchases of slaves. His purchase of slaves were more than he sold. He was used to renting out and hiring many slaves, but he hired more slaves than he rented out. Right? And there are many hadiths. Look, this is from Sahih al Bukhari. I mean, look, look the, the list uh, is endless. Right? The list is endless. And what does <coughs> Sahih al Bukhari? Sahih, 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 this is Sahih al Bukhari, volume 6, book 60, hadith number 80. And he is the Arabic reference. The verse, you, true Muslims, are the best of people ever raised up for mankind, means, this is from the Quran, this part, guys. Abu Huraira is saying, it means the best of peoples for the people, the Muslims, the best Muslims as you bring them with chains on their necks till they embrace Islam. So basically everyone is a slave of a Muslim. So you are a slave, I'm a slave, and Muslims have to bring us like slaves to embrace Islam. Did you catch it? Chains are around our necks? Yeah, slavery is halal in Islam, guys. Halal. Did you see it? Did you catch it? Ultimate truth. Sit down, dog. Sit down. Yeah? If, if you don't like it, go back to your uh, Mecca and do some smoochy smooch on the black stones. Kiss it, lick it. If you don't like today's topic. Who are you calling a liar? Filthy, disgusting creature that you are. Anyway, so like we said, and the proof is in front of you. These are Arabs, right? These are Muslims. 
and they are proud about slavery. We are not ashamed to say that slavery is permitted in Islam. Subhanallah, Allahu Akbar, right? If we go, go to the Quran guys, chapter 4, Surah An-Nisa, chapter 4, ayah 24, it says, and also forbidden to you are all married women, Mushanat, except those women whom your right hand possesses, which are the slaves, the sex slaves, the women. Take a beer, yeah. As a result of war. What your right hand possesses, right? Are the sex slaves. And even Muta is also mentioned here, right? That you give them a, uh, a woman some money, and this is this can be even a Muslim woman, right? You give her some money, you have you sleep with her, you have sex with her, and then it's over. So it's talking about the sex slave and also the prostitution that is muta. This is also the ayah of muta. Right? Rape of raping sex slaves, killing their husband, taking them for, uh, as booty. Right? No need to. Uh, I mean, that, that means, guys, you don't need to marry them. They, these are your personal sex slaves. You have sex with them without marriage. Okay? And muta is temporary marriage, as they call it. Right? That's what they said, but it's per, uh, prostitution also allowed by Allah. Right? Allah allowing prostitution with Muslim women. You, have, you give them money, you sleep with them, and then after a couple of hours, it's all over. Right? Look how beautiful Islam. I mean, guys, after today's teaching, if you are not convinced that Islam is the truth, then I don't know what truth means. You must say the Shahada after this, guys. Right? This is the beauty of Islam. Slavery. Sex slaves. Right? Muhammad Ahmed, I hope, I hope you have the knowledge and the courage to call me today. Right? And it's also mentioned in the hadith. This is Sahih, Sahih, Sahih Muslim, always with an echo. Sahih Muslim. Hadith number 1405a. Look what it says. There came to us the proclaimer of Allah's Messenger and said, Allah's Messenger, Muhammad, Allah is praying on him, still praying on Muhammad. We don't know why and we don't know to who Allah prays when he prays on Muhammad. But that's off topic. Has granted you, so Muhammad has granted you permission to benefit yourselves. What does that mean? I.e. to have sexual temporary intercourse. There's nothing called marriage. It's sexual prostitution intercourse with women. Give them money for a small period, for a temporary time. You, have, you enjoy them, and give them money and it's over. So Muhammad allowing this. Right? Muhammad allowing this to happen. But we know, we know that Shia still practice muta, which is temporary marriage, right? As they call it. Because they simply reject Omar. It was Omar after Muhammad died, muta was still okay, right? Muslims still practice muta. But when Umar became a caliph after Abu Bakr, he started to forbid muta'a, right? This is why Shia still practice muta because they don't like Umar, they curse Umar, they reject Umar and Abu Bakr, right? Right? So this is why Shia love to do muta because they reject Umar. And if we go to another hadith, Sahih Muslim, hadith number 161D. Let's say what this one says. I asked, Yahya reported, I asked Abu Salma what was revealed first time from the Quran. He said, oh, the shard one. I said, or recite, Jibir said, I am narrating to you what was narrated to us by the Messenger of Allah. He said, I stayed in Hira for one month. And when my stay was completed, 
says this guy, I came down and went into the heart of the valley. Somebody called me aloud. I looked in front of me, behind me, on the right of my side and on my left, but I did not see anybody. So this guy was hearing a voice, but he could not see who that where that voice was coming from, from who it was coming from. Then I was again called, so the voice called him again, and I looked about but saw nothing. Again he did not see anyone. I was called for a third time, so again he was called, and raised my head, and there on the throne in the open atmosphere, he, i.e. Jibreel, was sitting. What? Muslims, question! Since when is Jibreel allowed to sit on the throne of Allah? Eh? Like this. this. Let's say this is Jibreel sitting on the throne of Allah. So now, are you telling me now Jibreel became Allah and sits on the throne? I, I mean, this is something new, right? Not many people know about this. Jibreel sitting on the throne of Allah? On Allah's throne? Like this? Aha! I think, guys, Jibreel... Jibreel... <clears throat> must be Allah and I think it is the same Satan it's Satan shape-shifting Jibreel and Allah is the same guy because you know if we remember the story what happened in cave Hira when Muhammad was sitting in the cave a creature came and started to choke him Iqra read I cannot read read I tell you read he grabbing him by the throat for three times so this, it's the same Satan creature, right? Shape-shifting, we know the devil is a shape-shifter, right? The devil is a shape-shifter, and he can appear in many shapes and looks. He has different looks. Even if you go to the Hadith, we see that Allah comes in a different shape than the Muslims know him, right? Remember that Hadith? I think CP and... Um, also, I have me mentioned that hadith many times over, right? Right? So, this creature, Satan, Jibreel, Allah, it's the same guy. And Muhammad was also suffering from the black magic of Satan. So, it's the same creature that came to Muhammad, right? So, how is it possible, Muslims? Question. How is it possible that Jibreel is sitting on the throne of Allah? I s let's see if there's a Muslim who can answer that question. You know, when Muslims go on Hajj, like these people that you see here in front of you guys, they go almost naked. You see, this guy is almost naked. They go like this on the street. This is Mecca, guys. This is Mecca. These people go like this on Hajj. You know, as a Muslim, you have to go to Hajj at least once in your life if you are healthy or you have the, uh, the financial uh, stuff for it, right? Because, you know, doing Hajj is a very expensive thing to do, right? It will cost you maybe around ten thousand dollars, even if you if you are living far from Mecca, you know, it may it may even cost you a much bigger fortune than that. So they go like this, half naked, and they don't have anything ar uh, underneath the clothes. By the way, they are basically completely naked, right? So they go like this, running like crazy people around the car. Look, these look, these people are running, man. <laughs> Naked. Now, where did Muhammad actually got that from, guys? If we go to the hadith, Sahih hadith, Jam at Tirmidhi, hadith number 871, read with me. Zayd bin Utay said, Asked Ali, what is it that you were sent with? He said, with four things. None will be admitted into paradise except for the soul that is a Muslim. None is to perform tawaf, which is going around the Kaaba seven times, right? Around the house, the Kaaba, 
well naked so people used to go even muslims even non-muslims used to go around the kaaba completely naked but now you know now they are putting some you know sheets around their bodies but they are still naked it's a pagan ritual muhammad simply took it and implemented it in islam after he created islam so you know like chapter 9 says the muslims and the idolaters will not be gathering in mecca together after this year because muhammad started to forbid muslims uh, non-muslims christians jews pagans to enter mecca anymore right but still they used to go naked around the and they're still doing that and i'm not going to go to too much details but they and then not only went around the Kaaba, they used to do many filthy stuff around the Kaaba and on the black stones. Right? We shall not go to, to the juicy details, right? <laughs> God forbid. Disgusting details. But you know what the women used to do with the black stones, right? When they were on their period. Right? And the proof is in front of you. And if we go to Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih al-Bukhari, Hadith number 369, it says, Narrated Abu Huraira, on the day of Nahr, 10th of Dhul Hijjah, in the year prior to the last Hajj of the Prophet, when Abu Bakr was the leader of the pilgrims in that Hajj, Abu Bakr sent me along with other announcers to Mina to make a public announcement. No pagan is allowed to perform Hajj, after this year, a no naked person is allowed to perform tawaf around the Kaaba. And like I said, tawaf is going around the Kaaba, right? Like these monkeys here, these donkeys who go around the Kaaba. So they were not allowed to go naked anymore, but they used to do that, even in the time of Muhammad, right? It's all about sex, naked, being naked. You know, it's a sex religion, it's disgusting religion. And Muhammad, like, I, like we always say, Muhammad didn't bring anything new, guys. Muhammad simply adopted stories from here, traditions from there, uh, activities from there. It's a collecting of traditions, activities, disgusting activities that Muhammad adopted in his new man-made religion called Islam, right? Pagan rituals that are still in Islam. Even the black stones were a pagan stone, right? The Sabians used to go around the cover. Remember yesterday we mentioned the Sabians. They were star worshippers. Those people also went around the Kaaba. They did tawaf around the Kaaba. So Muhammad was a Sabian and he liked this ritual and he implemented it in Islam. Muhammad was a star worshipper, right? And as we know, Allah was the supreme moon idol together with his wife, the sun, Akbar. Allah, who? Akbar. Allah, the moon idol, and the sun idol, his wife, Akbar. Right? This is why Abraham said the sun is Akbar. Right? It's in the Quran. The sun is Akbar. And if we go to another very amazing story in Islam, we know that Muhammad hated lizards. Islam's war on lizards. I mean, look how cute this guy is, man. Man! Muslims must to kill these lizards when they see them, right? Where do, you, where, do, where do we get this from, guys? Let us go and see the book about lizards. We can find this in Sunnah Nabi Majah, right? Let us go to this hadith. It's Hassan Hadith, and here's the reference, as you see. And it says the following. It was narrated from... Shaiba, the freed slave woman of Faqib bin Mughayra, that she entered upon Aisha and saw a spear in her house. She said, O mother of the believers, 
What do you do with this, with this spear? She said, we kill these house lizards with it. What? You killed house lizards with the spear? Why? Well, here's the reason why. For the Prophet of Allah, Muhammad told us. So Muhammad told his Sahaba that when Ibrahim, Abraham, they call him Ibrahim, was thrown into the fire, there was no beast on earth that did not try to put it out apart from the house lizard that blew into it. So this, this guy here, this guy that you see here was doing like this. So that the fire will get bigger when Abraham was put in the fire. You know that's a false story. That never happened actually to Abraham, right? Muhammad invented this story. He thought that Abraham was thrown in the story. But we know that Abraham came from the city Ur. He was an Assyrian like me. I'm an Assyrian, guys. Muhammad, sorry, Abraham was an Assyrian. He came from the city Ur, which is nowadays Iraq or maybe Iran. I think it's Iraq, right? So he was an Assyrian. He came from the city called Ur. And Muhammad, because he is ignorant, he's a fake prophet. He thought that Ur, which means the city of fire, that Abraham was thrown in the fire. But actually Abraham came from the city called fire. But there are some other theories about it but uh, let us not go too much off topic about that story but Muhammad he must have heard the story and he you know he didn't understood the story but he implemented it in Islam anyway right I mean look at this guy man look how cute this guy is why, why you Muslims must must put hate on him why do you have to kill him man I mean how can you kill such a nice beautiful creature a child's bad stories, man. If you see a lizard, kill him because you'll get baraka, baraka, baraka. You'll get hadaya, right? You'll get blessings from Allah if you kill this guy. Look at these two, man. I'm sure they are planning to do fitna in the lands, right? Look, they are planning something, man. Muslims, really? Really? I mean, really? I mean, come on, guys, in the, in the chat. You're convinced this must be true, right? They, look at those two, man. This guy is pointing there. The other one is pointing there. This, this guy must say, let us attack Medina. And this guy said, no, no, let us go first to Mecca. You know, you, Lord knows what they are planning, man. Look at those fingers, man. Man, look at those fingers, man. Subhanallah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, there's a, there's a hadith where uh, Jews have been turned to lizards. Yeah, there are many crazy hadiths about lizards, right? But, you know, there are thousands of hadith. I can't go through all of them. But you get the picture, right? Subhanallah, subhanallah. This must be true. I mean, look, these, these lizards must be evil, man. Look at the fingers, man. This one is longer than the other one. This guy is must, must be truly evil. Yeah, they are going to do jihad on the Muslims, man. They have to be killed with spears, right? I mean, come on, man. Doesn't this guy look really dangerous? Man. Here's another, you know, here's another hadith. Basically the same. Oh, mother of believers, what do you do with this? She said, we kill these houses. So what do you do with the spear? We kill those houses. For the prophet block, same story again. <sighs> again, Sahih Hadith. Don't say it's lie. It's weak. It's life. No, no, no. It was narrated from Um Shari that the prophet Muhammad told her to kill house lizards. Right? Kill them, you will get barakas, you will get hadaya, right? Yeah, the middle finger, yeah. Yeah. Lord knows to who this middle finger is pointing at. Maybe to... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Dangerous lizards, man. You have to kill them. The moment you see them... I think some Muslims have even a GPS system to, to hunt lizards, right? Advanced... 
GPS system to hunt them down, to get a lot of baraka, baraka, barakas, right? What about zombies in Islam? What about zombies? Guys, I, I saw a video from a guy called Dr. Yasser Qadi and he made a video, he, he had a lecture about zombies in Islam. True story. Amazing fact. Yes, I mean, if you didn't you watch The Walking Dead TV show, it must be true, right? Come on. I mean, all these zombies walking around, right? And look at this guy. This guy has no arm, man. This must be a true story in Islam. Muslims must believe in this. True story, guy. Zombies, yes, zombies. Z O M B R E S zombies. Did you catch it? Zombies in Islam. Amazing story. True story. Did you catch it? Yes. Let's see, guys. I'm going to play the video. Don't it's uh, don't say it's Rob Christian. I mean, it's not me talking. Now listen to the video, guys. Listen to the video. Question to doubt. I myself have met people that have actually Pay left attention. Islam because of these types of tales and we have to be honest and frank and not pretend as if this doesn't exist perhaps some of you are not accustomed to hearing people speak like this but my philosophy is different we are dealing with a crisis of people leaving our faith our people own people leaving children, islam our own young men people and women. leaving islam yeah and of the reasons why is that we are not answering some of these issues that they bring and we dismiss them and I myself have discussed many of these issues with these types of people. And one of them, not the only one, but one of them is Ya'juj and Ma'juj. So we have to be very clear and frank and think critically even as we look at our tradition. The issue of Ya'juj and Ma'juj is something that doesn't just occur in the Hadith. It is explicit in the Quran standard medieval interpretation of Ya'juj and Ma'juj is the following. This is what you find in Ibn Kathir. You find it in the Tafsir literature tafsir. of Samarqandi and of yeah. Tha'labi. And basically, for Quran, guys. this is the mainstream interpretation for zombies, zombies, classical and middle ages of Islam. Ever since the beginning of writing Tafsir, let's say three, four hundred Hijra, up until pre-modernity, up until uh, going to CE 1800s or whatnot. If you look at any book of Tafsir, any book of history, the notion was the following. Ya'juj and Ma'juj are a bizarre, exotic tribe in the nether regions of the world that have been trapped by Dhul Qarnayn thousands of years ago. Guys, did you catch it? So Dhul Qarnayn, which they say is the large majority of scholars, Muslim scholars, say it, it is Alexander the Great, right? The story goes like this, that these creatures, these zombies, he's going, he, you know, I'll, I'll play the video more, but basically, those people are trapped behind a big wall by Alexander the Great. I mean, a lot of Muslims left Islam. I know one guy who was doing a lot of nice videos. He left Islam because he said, no one found that gate, that, that wall, right? That was created to keep those people, those creatures, yeah, Juj and Majuj, behind the wall, trapped. Where is that wall? Where is that gate? No one found that gate. And many Muslims are leaving Islam because of this story. So this guy is saying, this sheikh, this imam, he, need, he, he feels the need to address these issues. Muslims are leaving Islam because of these stories, right? So he's explaining about the zombies. He believes in this. Listen, listen. And they're still trapped to this day. That Ya'juj and Ma'juj are a living tribe blocked to this day behind the wall that was built 4,000, 5,000 years ago, that wall miraculously is still there. People can see on the one side and on the other side, you have these savages that savages. Allah knows how they're eating, <laughs> drinking, replicating, whatnot, and they're still zombies, there. For zombies, eons and eons and eons. zombies. True this story. This is the standard interpretation. Uh -huh. Dare I say, anybody who knows 
science and geography uh-huh. and modern civilization. You cannot believe that there is a tribe for 4,000 years trapped behind a wall. I mean, if you believe this, any... Walking Dead, guys, the Walking position, Dead I, I TV show in I Islam. I cannot. I, I find this very difficult to believe. You have to believe. Yeah, you have to believe in this. Many Muslims still believe this. I have nothing to say to this. If you believe it, Manny, he has I no have opinion. nothing to say. He has I, no I don't opinion. believe it is all I'm trying to say. I'm not trying to dismiss <laughs> any person's belief. And this is the belief of medieval scholars. If you still believe that there's a big wall that is lasting for thousands yeah, of years. So this way, guy knows better no than Ibn Kathir. structure is that fortified for four or five well, thousand years. Well, Spector, I don't know which wall. Did you find the wall? I didn't the find the wall. wall of China needs to be built up or whatnot. I mean, it doesn't work that way. But anyway, if you believe and yeah. anyway, so this is, uh, what can I say? If you believe it, you believe it. I am somebody who, I, I, uh, what can uh, I He doesn't say? believe. Uh, I, I mean, he knows better than Ibn Kathir. <laughs> I don't, I just, my mind doesn't believe this. Yeah, my mind doesn't Others believe Others have said, we need to reinterpret Ya'juj and Ma'juj metaphorically. <laughs> metaphor, and metaphor. This goes back to another thing that I kept on stalling when we talked about the Dajjal because I wanted to talk about it with Ya'juj and Ma'juj. And that is this newfangled interpretation. And it is newfangled. You do not find it in pre-modernity. This is a very modern interpretation. It Say only it. begins in the 60s and whatnot. Say it. And it has now become common, uh, very common. So much so that many famous people, many mainstream people are explicitly or implicitly say, saying it in this land and in some islands in the Bermudas as well. Say There's it, a famous it. person some, who's zombies, well known zombies. for this type of theory. No names mentioned. That's not my philosophy to mention names typically. Where they say Dajjal and Ya'juj and Ma'juj are zombies. <laughs> symbolic. <laughs> symbolic. <laughs> symbolic zombies. <laughs> it's not an entity. Dajjal <laughs> is, he will say, globalization. <laughs> And Ya'juj and Ma'juj, they might say Look, Russia it's all and America. Over, guys, they are the superpowers. talking about. They are attacking this guy. And honestly, I mean, this. okay, <laughs> jokes aside, I admire the fact they're trying to salvage the tradition. Look, this guy is attacking they him. They understand for that mainstream interpretation doesn't make sense. So they're trying to salvage the tradition. And they say, you know what? The Jal is a demonic force. The Jal is a global empire. The Jal is the new world Meta- order. Metaphorical. Uh, everything is metaphorical. Triangle. So as you see, you got the idea. And uh, you know, many people are attacking him for this, guys. Right? Many, many people are attacking him. Right? What, what does this guy say? Are you serious? What does this guy say? Are you serious? Zombies? Guys, I didn't invent this. Look, look. Do you see zombies here? Zombies? Are you serious? Yasir Qadi? Are you serious? Why so serious? Why, why so serious? Metaphor? Metaphor. Uh-huh. Zombies, huh? Yeah, subhanallah. Alhamdulillah. I hope you brothers and sisters are well. I'm a little bit disturbed. He's disturbed. This He's disturbed. And to be honest with you, I wasn't going to speak about the issue that I'm I'm going to speak about today. Um, except that when I reflected over it, I felt that um, remaining silent metaphor be defrauding the Muslims or defrauding those people who may need to hear this uh, or they are at a level where they perhaps wouldn't be able to pick up about such a thing. And I want to make it very, very clear um, that from the greatest forms of jihad, fi sabilillah, is you waging have. war against the people of innovation, <laughs> waging war against false ideologies. He's going to do jihad against Yasser Qadi, guys. In order to establish the haqq, to, in order to establish the truth. And this is one of the greatest forms of jihad, fi sabilillah. Uh, and it's PlayStation? Like I don't know about the PlayStation. Uh, to be honest, that's the reason why I blocked I, everything, I'm yeah. taking my time out today to speak about this issue. Innovation, guys. Um, a sister messaged me bid'a, last bid'a. night after uh, I had come on live 
uh, and look they are crazy and look how many videos to you message to yasir qadi speaking about yet Juj crazy Juj. speaking about muslims Juj are going Juj. crazy about this uh, and he has a series and i haven't listened to any of them and i wasn't even aware zombies of this series uh you know i'm not uh, somebody who goes in and uh, lies in wait and watches people uh, and watches their videos trying to pick out errors and trying to pick out mistakes and these types of things um for me i have spoken about yasir qadi extensively in the past and and have spoken and mentioned about his dangers and his misguidance and the falsehood that he is calling to and his, zombies uh, <laughs> his, his, method, his methodology of 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 a real subhanallah bringing doubts to the lay people in order that they you know he so makes... according to this i not i'm not sure this is this, this guy is sheikh or i don't know what he what he is so according to him yasir qadi in, instead of helping you know because a lot of muslims are leaving islam because of the story of yajuj and majuj and instead of helping yasir qadi instead of helping addressing the issues he is causing division he's causing innovation which is haram right bid'ah they, that's what they call innovating adding to to islam right innovating islam adding new stories changing reforming islam so this guy is attacking yasir qadi for mentioning the zombies right so there's a huge 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 confusion going on at the moment about what Yasir Qadi brought zombies creatures not normal creatures trap lot of mercy I mean who is now not convinced that Islam must be the true right I mean if you have seen Walking Dead the TV show you must believe in zombies right I mean come on right yeah, Juj and my Juj. So by this, guys, I want to um, say that the Q&A session has started. Maybe Muslims, if we have Muslims who want to call, maybe they can call us, refute us about the slavery in Islam that we mentioned today. Huh? What about the lizards that you have to kill? Well, I mean, lizards? Must, you must kill lizards because the lizard did this <laughs> so that uh, Abraham was getting more burned. I mean, come on. I, how, many, how many people in the chat are convinced to become Muslims now? Right? Do we have any Muslim? Do we have an Ustaz here who wants to call us? Do we have a Muslim? <clears throat> Someone wants to call me. If you are if you are not a Muslim, don't call me, please, right now. If we have Muslims, do we have any Muslim? My Skype is open. Are there any questions? That we can answer. If if I take the shahada, can I call? <laughs> well, are you convinced? La ilaha illallah. La 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 la. Come on, Muslim. I mean, is there an estas? I mean, we have more than hundred people watching now live. Are you telling me not one Muslim has the knowledge? All the courage to call me. Let us talk about Islam. Well, I'm not sure. Uh, someone is texting me in Skype. I'm not sure. I don't know if I have the time today. Maybe another time. I don't know. We'll see, okay? Do we have any Muslim? Do, are there any questions? Do we have any Muslim? Any Abdul? 
any ustaz, any imam who wants to talk about the zombies, maybe you can refute Dr. Yasser Qadi for us for bringing up this topic, which is a huge, huge, huge thing now at the moment. A message to Yasser Qadi. Look how many people are confused and shocked, right, about this hundreds and hundreds of videos. Yeah, please end my, end my career. Silence me. Right? Silence me. Are there still any Muslims that believe that slavery is not permitted or allowed in Islam? I mean, we mentioned slavery and we showed you how the Sheikh who is saying they are not ashamed without any shame Slavery is allowed and permitted in Islam. Without any shame, the Sheikh say. Slavery is halal, halal, halal in Islam. Right? Any Muslim? Are you going to say that Muhammad didn't own slaves? He didn't sell slaves? Be my guest. What about the sex slaves that your right hand possesses according to the Quran? And what about the muta? Prostitution that is halal for Muslim men, not only for the Muslim men, not women, right? Prostitution is halal, Muslims. Prostitution is okay, huh? right? What about Yajuj and Majuj? Muta? Anyone? Hey, welcome Kyrie Elison. Guys, please keep us in your prayers. Keep the admins in your prayers who are always doing an amazing job. Please keep us in your prayers. We are putting ourselves in the front lines to expose this satanic sex cult, this satanic cult that permits slavery, prostitution, sex slaves, zombie stories. I mean, it's, it can't be getting crazy, much crazier than this, right, guys? I mean, every time we find something new. Zombies? I mean, that's, that's, that is a new thing. I mean, if Christian Prince was here, he would have said, oof, oof, oof. Right? Where, where is Christian Prince when you need them? I mean, someone needs to ask uh, Christian Prince about this new, new discovery about, from Yasser Qadi. Zombies? That's a new thing. Guys, I, I found this. I heard about this like one week ago. I didn't know there was something called zombies in Islam yet. Oof, oof, oof. Someone needs to talk to Christian Prince about this. Man, where is Christian Prince when you need him? Zombies? It's getting crazier and crazier every week, man. <laughs> well, if Muslims used to do that, they were I mean, Muhammad saw a guy pissing in the mosque, and they didn't say anything. Let him, let him be. Oof, oof, oof. Yeah, where's CP when you need him, man? I mean, flying carpets, talking birds, ants. The ring of Solomon, the flying carpet of Solomon, right? The valley of the ants. I mean, amazing. Satan stealing the ring of Solomon, having sexual intercourse with the wives of Solomon, zombies, muta. I mean, it's, it's, it's getting crazier every week. Day in, day out, we read the most amazing facts about Islam. Yeah. You're not saying Alhamdulillah or uh, right, what not before having sexual intercourse with your wife. Satan will wrap himself around your uh, penis, right? He will F your wife together with you. Satan, right? crazy, crazy, crazy teaching in Islam. I mean, are you not convinced that Muhammad must be the true prophet of God? The last and the seal of the old prophets, man. Right? Take beer, take beer. 
I mean takbir, not take takbir. Beer is hal haram, haram. Don't don't say don't say take beer, right? Takbir. Right? Any Muslim? Is there any Muslim who can defend his prophet from us? I mean we are we are exposing Islam every day. Let's say not every every week. And no Muslim can defend his religion that's that's shocking man there are you know muslim always say there are 1.8 billion muslims on this planet alhamdulillah it's the fastest growing religion no one says it except the muslims right islam is the fast growing religion in the world fastest alhamdulillah right take beer but no muslim Dares to call us? I mean, 1.8, that's what they say, right? We know it's not 1.8. It's even the, the numbers are, you know, you know how many Muslims are leaving Islam in Saudi Arabia, even in Saudi Arabia, North Africa, Morocco, Tunisia. What about the Kurds? The Kurds, you know how many Kurds there are? They are even becoming Christians by the thousands, right? They even built a new church. They all converted to Christianity because they are tired of the lies of Islam and the hate and the violence of, of Islam, of the Prophet of Islam. Right? Uh, Abdul Lutba, you want to call me? I'm copying Christian Prince. Really? Well, if I sound like Christian Prince, that would be an honor, man. I mean, we are both Arabs, and you know, Arab, Arab people, people who know or have talked to Arab people, we all sound the same, right? Some people even think that I'm Christian Prince. <laughs> so it's a great honor to be... It's not a shame for me, actually. It's a great honor to sound like Christian Prince. It's an honor. I mean, why is it, is it not an honor? Did you see a Christian prince ever uh, getting spanked by a Muslim? Never. We are doing this. I myself, I'm doing this for almost 15 years now. 15 years. And why do you think we are still doing this? Because Muslims cannot even ask, answer one question. One question, they can't even answer it. This is why we are still motivated to expose this disgusting undefendable cult show me one chapter from the quran one chapter that has no disasters in it where where we can't spank the book of muhammad one chapter let us go to chapter one for example guys i mean i'm i'm copying christian prince it's like i said it's an honor for me i mean he is the one of the best maybe the best in the western world guys for the people who don't know, I'm an Arabic-speaking Christian, I'm an Assyrian, right? There are hundreds, maybe thousands of better people than Christian Prince. But because Christian Prince, he is maybe one of the views people who are doing it in English. But there are hundreds of Christian Princes in the Arabic-speaking world. But you don't know about these people because you, you, you are not living in that. side right what about Zakaria Butros what about brother Rashid what about brother Walid Osama Dagduk including myself many great warriors in Christ exposing this filthy disgusting sex cult hate cult violent cult if we go to chapter one this is the very first chapter right we know Chronog chronological, it's not the first chapter, but, you know, Muslims played with the Quran and they made this to be the first chapter. It's not the first chapter, but, you know, because when you ask a Muslim, what's the first verses, they say it's Iqra, right? Well, do you see Iqra here in the first chapter? No. So even they played with the whole Quran. They corrupted the Quran with their own hands. When you see dots and tashkil, you see these things, 
When Muslims started to put these dots, you see dots, all these, you know, things on top of the letters, two dots, one dot. When they started to put those dots and these tashkil and whatnot, they started to corrupt the Quran. Because if you put a dot somewhere else, let's say here, it becomes an N. He, this is a B. This is an N, you see? When you put it here, it becomes a different word. Right? So Muslims, when they started to corrupt the Quran, they did it when they started to do this. Right? Change the text. And what about this? This, this very first ayah, guys. The first ayah of the Quran. Let's see if it contains a disaster. Challenge? Muslims, challenge. The very first ayah. Not the second. I not forget about this. The first one. Bism. Allah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. First of all, there's nothing called bism in Arabic. It's bism. So this word is grammatically a dis disaster. What about the third word? Al-Rahman. Well, here an elif is missing. If I would have written this sentence like it is now here in an Arabic exam, I would have failed my exam. I kid you not. It's not bism, it's bism, and it's al Rahman. Here should be an alif, al Rahman. Where's the alif? Where's the a? Like this one. Where is the alif? So they needed to fix it with this thing here on top of it. Did you see it? Did you catch it? Yes, long alif. Al Rah. This is an M, guys. Al Rah. Man, where's the alif? Someone is calling me. If you are not a Muslim, I'll, I will not accept your call. Let's see. Hello? Hello. Hold on. Who is this? Hello? Hello? Mute YouTube, mute YouTube. Call me, call me when you fix your uh, settings. I don't have, I don't have time to waste my time. So, this is the first verse that that contains issues. Hello. How are you? I'm good. Hello. We Rob? No, oh, no, it's it's you again. Is it you again, yes, Ultimate I Shirk? Yeah. You Why? Run again? Yeah, I'm I'm always running. My like yesterday, I run. <laughs> I run for, I always run from you, don't you know? Oh my god. I'm shivering. <laughs> I don't know what to do with myself. You're running the world, bro. Yeah. You running? Yeah, I'm running. Why are you bro? running? Yeah, Christian yeah. Prince has blocked me. Sam Shamoon can debate me. I whoop his ass on the on the yeah, DCCI yeah. channel. Yeah, you always whoop our asses. This is why it's we me. always expo it's expose the same. Islam. This is why. We it's the same. And you're doing the my same, My friend, brother. listen, listen. If, if you could whoop my ass, I, I would have stopped me. exposing your satanic code long time ago. Your sex code. Okay, now let's debate. Let's pick a, choo pick, pick a topic. No. Any topic. Pick a topic? Okay, okay. Yes. Any topic. Any. Okay, to who is yes. Allah saying praise to be Allah? This is the speech of Allah, the Quran, right? That's what you Muslims say. Yes, who is Allah? Me, I'm orders. asking, shut up, shut up. I'm asking you yes. a question. When Allah yes. is talking in the Quran, to who does he say praise to be to Allah, the Lord? To who is Allah saying the merciful, the compassion? To who is Allah saying that please, Allah is saying, please direct us on the straight way? Guide us on the straight yes. way? Is Allah talking here? Who is yes, talking? Yes, who, wait, wait. who is talking? Just ask your question. Yeah. Uh, this is my just question. Ask question. Answer. answer. Answer my question. Go ahead. That, there we go. Auz billahi minash shaitan rajeem. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Rabbi auzu bika min hamazati shayyatin wa azbika rabbi an yahdhuru. Blah blah blah. Yeah. Um, blah blah blah. Yeah. You okay. did. Uh, okay. I, answer. I tell you just some. Yes. I will answer. Just, just you answer. You, you ask your question. I'm waiting. You I'm waiting. You said to who Allah saying praise be, praise be to Allah. Yeah. Allah is saying praise Allah. to Allah. Praise to Allah. Allah. This book, the Quran, is destined to human beings. To to whom it gets. You don't, should be. Listen, don't give me speech. Answer it, the question. It, who it, is it, Allah it, saying? It, direct us on the straight. Who is Allah saying? Praise be to Allah. Did I cut you off? No. You ask me, I Answer know the your question. Portion. Don't give me speech. I don't like to get speech. I, I, I have... Listen, Abdul, I'm, I'm, al I'm already on the mic for a long time. 
I'm getting tired. So answer my question. I know. Every or time I'm going I call you, spank you. Every time I call you, that's the same thing. Okay, answer. Let me answer. answer. Your question. Don't give me speech. You answer. said to who? Allah is saying it yeah. to any human beings. Any human being gotta praise Allah. Is praise the, uh, all praises yeah. are due to uh, Allah. Is the Quran a speech so of Allah? Is the Quran a speech praying? of Allah? Who's talking? Who's talking here? Allah is talking to us. So Allah is saying, Allah, Allah is saying, praise to be to Allah. Yes. Allah you is saying, pra praise to Allah. You got the same verse in the Bible. Praise be to God. Who's 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 talking? The one Do you know who, that? The one who wrote it is the point of view from the I writer. Said, but this is the speech of Allah. Are you are you stupid? Are you a donkey? Oh, uh, I thought the Bible was the speech of God. It's not. But the it's Bible written by men like you and me, my friend. Quran 2 but is here, Quran you Muslims, Abdul, Abdul. Quran 2 is Abdul, written Abdul, by men. Abdul, Abdul, listen, Allah listen. When Quran. we ask you, when we must, when we ask Muslims, what is the Rab Quran? You say it's the speech the of Quran. Allah, it's the Hadith of Allah, right? It's the Hadith of Allah. Quran, so when Allah is saying Allah speech. prays to Allah, that doesn't make sense, my friend. No, Allah, all praise be to Him. Any question, Rob? So, Any I question. Say, so let's say Pray the Quran. Quran. So let's say the Quran is my speech. I say, Rob Christian is saying, all no. praise to Rob Christian. So this means... Yes, you said... So you are saying you telling that me, so are you are telling praise. Allah suffer, suffers from schizophrenia. Schizophrenia? Uh, so you when you say it to Allah, you say it to your God, because the same exact verse exists in your Bible. Show all me. praise be to God. Show me, show me where what? any Christian, any Christian believes what you say. Show me one Christian who believes what you say. What has Christianity to do with this issue, man? You are we don't believe what you just said. We, you are lying. You People are laughing. I can go to 50 verses from your Bible. 50. Just go, just go, just go. You know, this guy is a waste of time, man. Every time I give him a chance, he always shows himself to be nothing but a donkey. Allah, guys, Allah is suffering from a really serious brain damage. Allah... In his speech is saying, Allah is saying, Allah is saying, praise to be to Allah. I mean, come on, man. We shouldn't ask Allah to go see a doctor. We should ask Allah to go see a doctor. Because we don't, when we Christians say, guys, when we Christians say, the Bible is the word of God. Yes, we do, we do say that. But wait a second. God inspired let's say f around 40 people who wrote the Bible, they wrote the Bible with, they are the writers. It's from their point, it's like a biography, right? If you go to the book of, of John, right? They wrote it, they are, it's their point of view, right? Inspired by the Holy Spirit, right? But when we ask, this is a different, different story for the Quran, right? Totally different story. When we ask Muslims, what is the Quran? They say it's the speech of Allah. It's the hadith of Allah. Guys, the Quran is a hadith. Take notes. It's like this, right? It's like Muhammad is talking. Muhammad is talking. We kill these. So see here, Muhammad is the one talking, doing the talking, right? Right? So when they say it's the speech of Allah, and we ask them very, very important question. I mean, this is a sincere question, guys. Why is Allah saying to himself, praise do be Allah? Why is Allah asking for guidance? Yeah? Allah is asking for guidance. Allah is saying, Ahdina sirat al mustaqeen. That doesn't make sense. Guy, please, guy, Allah is saying to Allah, to himself, please guide me. To the straight path? I mean, I, either either this guy doesn't understand my question, or he wants to confuse himself only. I mean, no one is buying it, Abdul. You must be insane to believe that this is the speech of Allah. Because no normal human being would accept that Allah is saying, like now I'm saying, hey guys, I'm going to talk. Now Rob Christian is going to talk. I will say as Rob Christian, Rob Christian is talking now, saying, praise be to Rob, Rob Christian, God forbid. God, praise be to Rob Christian, coming from my mouth. That doesn't make sense, man. 
Allah must be the worst communicator in the whole history of the universe. If this is the speech of Allah. If I was a Muslim, I would be confused from the very first chapter. Right? And, there, and every chapter, I kid you not, every chapter contains disasters like this. What about the grammatical mistake? I, I, know, I know this guy is not an Arabic, this ultimate shirk guy who uses one of the 99 names of Allah because, you know, truth is one of the 99 names, right? This time he called me with my own name. He's, he called me with Robert the man. So he's using my own name. Okay, whatever. So I didn't want to ask him about the grammatical disaster here because he's not an Arab. He's a, he's a guy, he's a poor victim, a guy from Senegal who is living in France. I think. He's a victim. He doesn't know the language. He doesn't speak Arabic. He doesn't understand Arabic. I'm not going to ask him about the grammatical mistakes. I mean, come on, man. So we can put a big red cross on this chapter. Right? The very first chapter. Right? And he, I, didn't, I didn't even mention how Muhammad, when he fabricated this ayah, chapter 1, ayah 7. Now Muslims need to repeat the curses of Muhammad that is in the Quran. When Muslims pray, they recite this entire chapter at least 15 times, right? At least. And they are asking... Allah to not be cursed like the Jews and the Christians, right? The, if you read it like this, the way of those whom you have favored, those are the Muslims guys who did not incur your wrath, those are the Jews and who are not astray, set astray, those are the Christians. So they are repeating the curses of Allah 15 times a day at least, at least. Can you imagine? More than 15 times. All right? And by the way, guys, by the way, I think I mentioned this earlier. If we go to chapter 15, I'm going to show you that even chapter 1 that we just showed you was not originally in the Quran. They actually added that chapter to the Quran. Right? Let me show you. Chapter 15, Ayah 87. Now read guys with me. We have indeed bestowed on you the seven often repeated verses. Which, which are the of seven often repeated verses? This is the Fatiha, right? Al-Fatiha, the first chapter that we just mentioned. Right? The Muslims repeat Al-Fatiha, chapter 1, at least at least 15, even more than 15 times a day. And the great Quran. So they added, guys, the seven verses to the Quran. Did you catch it? So here, Muslims played with the Quran. They added chapter one to the Quran. Boom! Corruption on top of corruption. And if you don't believe me, let, let us go to the tafsir, guys. Maybe uh, Rob Christian is lying. All right? Maybe. Rob Christian is lying. I'm always lying, right, Muslims? You just heard Rob Christian, you're, why are you lying? Okay, let us go to the tafsir of this ayah. Chapter 15, ayah 87. Let's see if Azbab al Nuzul says anything about this. Let's see. Hmm. What does Tafsir al Jalani says? This is a Jalalain. This is not my Tafsir. This is one of the biggest scholars in Islam. Al Jalalain. And verily, we have given you seven of the often repeated verses. The Prophet said that this meant Surah Al Fatiha. Did you catch it? So, what is the often seven often repeated verses? This is Al Fatiha. You catch it? So when they added Al-Fatiha, 
to the Quran, the Quran became corrupted. And then it says end. Did you catch it? Did you see the word end? It's in front of you. And the great Quran. So the Al-Fatiha guys, Al-Fatiha, the first chapter was never part of the Quran in the first place. It's a prayer, right? When you ask Muslim, what is Al-Fatiha? They say it's a prayer. So they added the prayer, the first chapter, to the Quran. Because it says, and the great Quran. Boom! Corruption on top of corruption. Take beer, Muslim. How many Muslims know about this? Huh? Huh? Perfectly corrupted Quran. You know, like I always say, even a donkey, when he hits his head in the, inside the wall, he will understand that, you know, it will cause me pain. And this ultimate sure guy, he never learned. He always calls in to get pain. Every time he hits his head in the wall, he doesn't learn. Even a donkey would have not done it twice. So yeah, congratulations, Mr. Ultimate Shirk. Even a donkey is more smart than you. This guy just loves to get spanked every time. Wasting my time. Getting spanked, wasting my time. Any, do we have any smart Abdul? Huh? Do we have any Muslim who has the knowledge and the courage to come? Yeah, yeah. You know, Kenosis, this guy is so stupid. He doesn't understand that the Bible is not, not written by God. It's inspired by God through the Holy Spirit. But the writers of the Bible, they wrote it from their point of view, inspired by God. It's not actually God giving the Quran like the Quran. Right? When you ask the Muslim, let me repeat it guys, see the difference. When you ask a Muslim, what is the Quran? It says, they say it's the hadith of Allah, the speech, the very speech of Allah. Like I talk, I'm talking now, this, it's like my speech, it's the speech of Allah. You see the difference between the Holy Bible and the Quran? You see that? And how, ma how many more verses do you, do you want me to show you that the Quran is corrupt? With your own hand. You Muslims have corrupted the Quran. By the way, guys, do you remember the hadith? Let me show you. Okay, so we have someone calling. Ibrahim. Who's Ibrahim? Hello? Hello? Hi, hello. Hi, hello. How are you, my friend? Hello. Yeah, I'm good. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Mm -hmm. Do you have a question, my friend? Yeah, I was just uh, looking at your debate and means your discussion and all those information there. That's why I just jumped into it. Yeah, are you are you a Muslim, my friend? Yep. You're a Muslim. Okay, okay. What's your question? What do you want to share with us? No, no. What do you want to share with us? Go, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, my friend. What do you want to say? Yeah, I means you you are continuing with the topic, so you go ahead. I want to go ahead. I okay, uh -huh. okay. I'll I'll ask you a question. Can you tell me uh, why Islam is the truth? Why why do you think Muhammad is a true prophet? Can you give a, give me some evidence? How can we trust cr trust this guy to be a prophet? Okay, so first you have tell me what the what's the criteria of uh, classifying someone as a prophet well what's what's his proof i mean i can say now to you hey look i have a book it's from <coughs> it's from god should you not mm -hmm. should you not uh put me on a test to see hey uh maybe this guy is lying maybe he's yeah. a scam what's the proof for muhammad to be a prophet of god yeah correct if uh, this is your criteria that uh, if someone comes up with a book and he says it's a it's from god yeah so yeah I that mean, book, uh, that book must be so if I say to you today, now, right now, I say I wrote a book and it's this book, uh, it's divinely inspired from God, you will believe that I'm a prophet? No, so your message should be means correct and it should, it should be truth now. Sorry, come again? 
So your message should be correct and it should be truth. Okay. So what's how are you going to know if I'm a lying if I'm lying or not? Uh, every person judges judges from his own intellect. Correct. What? I I don't understand every what person, you're saying. Every every person judges from his own intellect. Okay. And what more? So he will judge whether it's a truth. So he will judge whether the message is truth or falsehood. Okay. And how do we know that? Mm -hmm. Can you give me some examples? How how do you know if Muhammad is a true? What is what is the best criteria for you? What is the best proof that no. you can give me that Muhammad is a true prophet? No, no. in fact, uh, give me the best, give me your best, give me your best, 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 best evidence, best proof that Muhammad is a true prophet. You know, when you say that, how, to, how do I mean, say, recognize that Muhammad is a prophet or not? So I ask you in return that, what's your criteria? Okay, so I, I'm not here to give you the criteria, but you have proposed this uh, yeah, give me question, so you, answer yeah. my question, please. What mm -hmm. give me give me the best evidence, your best proof that Muhammad is a true prophet? Give me the best you okay, have. His messages. The best of the best. Look okay, at the message. The message of the Islam is truth, and is, is that is that what you have? Language. Is that your answer? Mm -hmm. Okay. You know what? I don't have time for this uh, nonsense, man. Either you're going to give me the best what you got, or don't give me uh, answers like a, a twelve-year-old kid, man. Come on. No, no, give me, give me. The, I'm, I mean, you're the one who called me. I'm, I'm ask. I've been asking yeah, Muslims for the you, last. Listen, you, listen, my, my friend, my friend. I've, I've been asking Muslims for the last fifteen years to give me their best evidence. To accept Muhammad. I mean, don't you want me to become a? I mean, one of I'm one of the biggest people on YouTube that are that is exposing Islam almost every week, right? And no Muslim can give me one evidence to invite me to Islam to say the Shahada, right? Convince me that Muhammad is a true prophet. Go ahead. So that's what I was asking. You know, what's your criteria of being? Classifying someone as a prophet. That's what I ask you. Different people have different criteria. Okay. What's okay. your criteria? Okay. For example, for example, you know the story about Muhammad in the cave, right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you can you tell me? Can you show me one prophet that has been squeezed like Muhammad by a so-called angel? Can you show me one prophet who have experience that one prophet no, no, means you cannot say that you cannot I mean, say that okay, a particular okay. prophet shouldn't a pro shouldn't a angel say salamu alaykum ya muhammad what happened to muhammad muhammad immediately was forced to read something right iqra right so this creature asked him to do iqra that's the first ayah right when we ask Muslims, what's mm -hmm. the first ayah? They say it's Iqra. Okay, Iqra. Yeah. Okay. Muhammad says, I cannot read. Right? There's okay. nothing to read. Mm -hmm. So then, then this, this uh, creature starts to choke Muhammad. He is forcing Muhammad. Can you show me one prophet who had the same experience? I mean, like, squeeze uh, no, like grapes. We... Whoosh, whoosh. No, no, we don't. Can you give me one prophet who had the same experience, please? I'm waiting. Go ahead. No, we, we, don't, we don't believe that he means he, he wasn't able to read or write or... Means, Forget about uh, reading or writing. Or he was. Can you show me one uh -huh. prophet who was squeezed like Muhammad, like a grape? I mean, for what he was squeezed? You know what? Uh, please, on. my friend, my friend. Let me, let me your dad call me. I, you know, I don't want to waste my time. No, he, call he, me next he time. He wasn't squeezed. He what? He wasn't sque uh, squeezed? No, he was. You are, uh, yeah, you are just using this uh, fabricated means uh, part of the history. Are you, de are you denying the historical okay. uh, historical event that happened to yeah. your prophet? Are you denying this? Anything which, which is just written in the history it doesn't mean it's a yeah, clear historical evidence. Okay. So Muhammad was not squeezed in the cave, according to you? No. No. Okay. Go study the biography of the life of Muhammad and come back. Okay. Uh, you know, I don't want to waste my time with uh, with uh, such.
such people, man. He, he is ignoring the historical story about the life of Muhammad that he was squeezed. Right? Potato. Potatoes, man. Bring me your dad, man, next time. Bring me your imam. Lord of mercy. Denying the historical event that happened in the cave. The first revelation, right? Right? You want me to show it on the screen? You see it? Is, is this the website made by Arab Christian? The spirit of Islam. Hmm? And how did Muhammad react to that story? Huh? Did he know that it, this was an angel? No, he didn't. It was Khadija and Waraka bin Nufil who had to tell him it must be an angel. Muhammad, his first feeling was it is a demon. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Like a grape. And you want to deny the historical fact? It's your story, not mine, man. And Muhammad says, I can't bear it. It caused me pain. Right? And what did Khadija do? She brought him to her cousin Waraka. And what did Waraka say? It's Namus. Even Waraka said, it's not an angel. It said, it's the law. Namus means law. Right? Right? Let's see. This is the story, guys. Sahih al-Bukhari, narrated from Aisha. Sahih, Sahih, Sahih al-Bukhari. Hadith number, oh, very long hadith. Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 6982. Oh, I see that <laughs> Phil Herrera posted the same hadith. Great. So, <clears throat> this is the hadith from the mouth of Aisha. Don't say this is Rob Christian. This is the mother of the believers, narrated by her. The commencement of the divine inspiration. Learn, learn. The one who just called me. Learn about the historical event that is reported by your most authentic sources. The, the mother of the believers is talking about it, mentioning it, reporting it. The commencement of the divine inspiration to Allah's messenger. Allah is praying on him. In the meanwhile, still Allah is praying. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Was in the form of good, righteous, true dreams in his sleep. He never had a dream but that it came true like bright daylight. Wow, amazing. Christian Prince would have said, oof, oof, oof. He used to go in selection to the cave of Hira, where he used to worship Allah alone. So you see guys, Muhammad was a pagan and Allah was a pagan moon idol. Before the so-called divine inspiration came to him. Continuously for many days. and You see, Allah already existed before Islam, guys. Allah is the pagan moon idol. Yes, like that, Jason Palmer. Exactly like that. Allah looks like that. Exactly. Like that one icon that you just posted. So Allah was a pagan moon idol. Supreme moon idol of the Quraysh. And Muhammad was a pagan. The proof is in front of you. He was worshipping Allah. And Tawheed, guys was already before Islam. Tawheed means unification. What does that mean? Allah was already the supreme moon idol. And the pagans were practicing Tawheed. Allah, together with Akbar, the sun idol, his wife, Allah and his wife, together with his three daughters. And that's unifying unification. Right? 
continuously for many days. So Al Muhammad was already worshipping Allah, the Moonite. He used to take with him the journey food for that stay and then come back to his wife Khadija. Did you catch it? To take his food likewise again for another period to stay. What an amazing story. Till suddenly the truth descended upon him while he was in the cave of Hira. The angel came to him in it and asked him to read. Iqra. The prophet replied, I do not know how to read. Ma ana biqari. I don't know how to read. It doesn't say how to read. It says I cannot read. False translation. Let me finish this and I will accept the call. Okay, guys, just a second. Call me back when I'm finished with this hadith. Then the angel called me. Look, it's not me saying it. It's not me reporting. It's Aisha reporting the story. It's an historical event, according to you Muslims. You see? And you want to ignore the story? Shame on you. You call yourself a Muslim? Shame on you. Hello? Hello? Yes, Rob. You, you want to know who was squeezed? Yeah, you, your prophet was squeezed, right? Just go. I, mean, Abdul, Abdul, I, have no, I have no time for you. You're a kid. This is the same uh, ultimate shirk. Your prophet was squeezed. Yeah, and the proof is in front of you. Don't waste my time, Abdul. Call me next time. Call me next time. So, the angel forcefully, you see, forcefully, Squeezing Muhammad pressed me so hard that I could not bear it anymore. Catch it? So who 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 are you? Do you have any shame? Do you have any dignity to do, ignore the this story? Shame on you, man. Who was squeezed? Your prophet was squeezed. <laughs> uh huh. Anyone uh, convinced? Anyone wants to take the Shahada? I mean, it's now or never. Come on, guys. I mean, I'm, I'm asked the, I asked the guy a very sincere question. Can you show me one prophet, except Muhammad, one prophet in the whole history of prophets who was squeezed like a grape? <laughs> well, Angelo, I don't know. It's like the lottery. Who knows? Maybe you will get squeezed, maybe not. Who knows? Allahu A'lam. Allah knows best. Was Abraham squeezed? Was Moses squeezed? No. Amazing story, man. If we continue, guys, I don't know. It says, I do not know how to read. It doesn't say that. Ma'ana biqari, it means I cannot read. So they have to fix the, with the trans always sugarcoating the translation, right? Lying. Liars. Whereupon he caught me again. So again, the, this so called this demon, it's a demon, right? Again, Jibril, the demon, caught him, Muhammad, and squeezed him, pressed him a second time till I could not bear it. So Muhammad said, I, I, Stop, I can't. I, I will die. Right? It was such a violent act, guys. He was getting squeezed like a grape, I kid you not. You know when you are going to make wine from grapes? Like this. He was a grape, basically a grape. He then released me, so Jibril released him and asked, asked Muhammad to read again for the third time. But again I replied, I cannot read. Again. Right? Or what? <laughs> You know, they are, fixed. they are fixing it with the, the, the translation, right? Anyway, thereupon he caught me for the third time, for the third time again squeezing Muhammad. Not once, not twice, but three times. Read, iqra, right? As creator, yeah, okay, this is the ayah guys from the Quran, right? Remember? Uh, Allah is saying how he created mankind from a dead Blood clot, right? Congealed blood. Remember how many times Christian Prince have mentioned it to you guys? I mean, come on. So, according to Allah, mankind is created from dead blood. Congealed dead blood. Any scientist who agrees with this in 2019? I mean, you must be convinced. You Muslims are basically zombies. You are created from dead blood. You are zombies. 
You, you only Muslims look like these guys when they are babies. You are, you are created from dead blood. You are a dead, you are walking dead, man, according to Allah. From a blood clot, dead congealed blood. Muslim zombies, yeah. Didn't you hear Yasir Qadi? Zombies in Islam. <laughs> so Allah, Allah's messenger, returned with the inspiration, his neck muscles twitching <laughs> with terror. I mean, I think Jibreel forgot to say, Salamu alaykum ya Muhammad. Peace be upon you. So Muhammad was with terror. He was afraid, you know, as if he saw a horror, the worst horror movie ever. Till he entered upon Khadija said, cover me, cover me Khadija, cover me. So she covered him till his fear was over and he said, oh Khadija, what's wrong with me Khadija? Oh. Muhammad, shouldn't me Muhammad have been comforted by this so-called angel? This was his worst experience ever. Cover me, Khadija, cover me. Like a baby, cover me, cover me. I'm afraid. Someone took away my popsicle, man. Someone stole my bike. Anyway, then he told her everything that ha happened to him and said, I fear that something may happen to me. Khadija said, never, Rasulullah, but have the glad tidings for by Allah. How? I mean, question Muslims. Question. How did Khadija know that it's God talk, who gave him, who inspired him through Jibreel? Was Khadija uh, a prophet? How did she know? I mean, did she see the angel? Where did she get the idea that it must be God? Hmm? What kind of... How, you know, this is how Islam was created in the first place. Through Khadija and Waraqa bin Nufal. It's an assumption. So, guys, we can say that Islam is created by the assumption of Khadija and Waraqa ibn Nawfal. It is what it is, guys. Never, uh, Khadija said, but have glad tidings for by Allah, Allah will never disgrace you. How do you know that, Khadija? Who are you, Khadija? It's you are a woman. You know what Muslims uh, say about women? You know what Muhammad said about women? Women are brain deficient. They are half-brained. So how do, how do you Muslims put faith in a half-brained woman like Khadija? Who is Khadija? Was she divinely inspired like her husband? Hmm? Allah will never disgrace you. Yeah. How do you know? We don't know. Allah will. Speak the truth. Speak the truth. Help the poor. Okay. That's, that means this is the criteria for a prophet, guys. According to Khadija, this is the criteria for being a prophet. If Guys, I think we have a lot of prophets among us. I mean, I know a lot of people who are very nice. They speak the truth. They don't never lie. They help the poor. Serve, serve people generously. I mean, are, are those people prophets now? Are they divinely expi uh, inspired? So Khadija then accompanied him to see her cousin. So guys... Khadija then brought Muhammad, her husband, to her cousin Waraka ibn Nawfil. Right? Bin As'ad bin Abdul Uzza. You know, remember the word Uzza, guys? So, he comes from a line of people in his family who were worshipping Al Uzza. They were pagan Quraysh. See that? Abd, Abd means slave of Abdul Uzza. Did you catch it? Slaves of Al Uzza, one of the three daughters of Allah. Waraqa was the son of her paternal uncle, her cousin, i.e., her father's brother, who during the pre Islamic period became a Christian. Yeah, right. Christian. Yeah, 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 Christian. Christian. Okay, I will give you $1,000 if you can show me the word Christian in the Arabic. Liars, filthy liars. You know, they need to fix stuff when they translate, right? I used to write the Arabic writing and used to write of the Gospels in Arabic. So, guys, take notes. Waraq ibn Nufil used to copy from the Aramaic Gospel. Right? He had access to the Aramaic. This is why you see so many stolen stories from the Gospels. So, Waraq ibn Nufil 
spoke Aramaic like I do. Shlomo, Pshainu, right? Aramaic. In Arabic. So he was translating gospel in Arabic from the Aramaic as much as Allah wished him to write. Right. So this, so guys, Waraq ibn Nufil was speaking to Allah. Another prophet. So Waraq ibn Nufil is basically a prophet. Did you see it? Did you catch it? <laughs> How many prophets are there in Islam, man? Last time I checked, it was 124,000 prophets, right, Muslims? You have 124,000 prophets. Can you give me all the names and all their messages and their books? I want to read them, man. 124,000 prophets in Islam alone. So he was an old man. Waraka was an old man and had lost his eye. He was blind. I mean, question, Muslims. How can a blind man write? How can a blind ma man write? Tell me, guys. Please answer my question. Disaster on top of disaster. Waraka is blind and can write? Can he see what he writes? I mean, maybe it's a picture. Maybe he can write for, uh, for, draw for you a nice picture. But write? Lord of mercy. So Khadija said to him, Oh my cousin. She said to, uh, to Waraka, Oh my cousin, listen to the story of your nephew. Waraka asked, Oh my nephew, what have you seen? Then Muhammad described whatever he had seen. Waraka said, This is the same Namus. Did you catch it, guys? Waraka didn't say, This is Injil. Uh, sorry, this is Jibreel. No, 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 no. Waraka said, this is the law. Now, Moose in Arabic, guys, it's the law. The law of who? The law that was given to Moses. Boom! So why do you Muslims say, Waraka said that it must be Jibreel? This is the translation. They are adding. Did you catch it? So Waraka said only, this is Namus. This is the law. Did you catch it? Muslims, stop lying. Stop lying. We can read. We know what Namus means. It's the law. Namus that was given to Moses. So here, Waraka said, this is what was given to Moses. It's the same what is given to you. Did he say this is Jibreel? No. Did he mention Jibreel? No. Did he say this is an angel? No. Whom Allah had sent to Moses. Did you catch it, guys? The Namus, the law, like our brother, dear brother, Horera saying Namus law. This is the law whom Allah had sent to Moses. So who mentioned Jibreel? No one mentioned Jibreel. Did Muhammad say saw Jibreel? No, he didn't saw. Did Khadija saw Jibreel? No. So Islam, guys, is created on the assumption of who? Not Waraka. It's the created on the assumption of Khadija, who said this must be the angel, right? Right? Why did she say it? Or somewhere here. Okay. Anyway. <clears throat> so, Muslims, prove to us that it was the angel Gabriel, as you say. No proof. Did anyone see J Jibreel? No, no one saw Jibreel. Did anyone see an angel? No one saw an angel. So it was Khadija who convinced Muhammad that it must be an angel. And later, you know the story about the striptease of Khadija and the lap dance of Muhammad, right guys? Khadija said, come, come my, uh, my husband, come ya ibn Ammi, sit on my lap. So she, he sat on her lap and she asked him, Khadija asked Muhammad, can you see the creature? He says, no. Yeah, I, sorry, he says, yes, I can see him. Then she asked him, come sit on my other lap. Then she asked him the same question. Can you see him? He says, yes, I can still see him. Then she took off his, her clothes. And then he, she asked him, can you see him? No. So, hey, it must be an angel. Because if it's not an angel, he, he would have not gone away. Because, you know, the angel cannot see a naked woman. 
You see how Islam is created on an assumption? And we know what an assumption is. It's the mother of all peeps. Right? I don't want to say the words. You know how the sentence go in English, right? Assumption is the mother of all peeps. Right? And so Islam is created on the striptease and the lap dance on the lap of Khadija by Muhammad. That's what I always say. Right? Don't forget about how Khadija also made her dad drunk. Right? Remember how she deceived her dad. So it's created on basis of a deception of the dad of Khadija because, you know, the father of Khadija didn't want to give Khadija to Muhammad. Right? So they, she deceived her dad. Then she deceived herself and Muhammad and all the Muslims by a lap dance and a striptease. Anyways, do we have any Muslim? I mean, come on, man. We have only ultimate donkey. Do we have any normal human being who can answer questions? We were, uh, I mean, two Muslims called me today. I, we, we spanked one, one of them. And the other guy could not even answer a question. Prove to me that Muhammad is a true prophet. Give me your best shot. No answer. Waste of time. Any Abdul, any Ustaz. Is there any Imam? I think we are out of, out of Muslims. Guys. It's one of those days. I mean, Shiro, it's not funny, man. Don't laugh, man. Shiro Kuro. It's not funny anymore. I kid you not. It's not funny. Inspiration from, from Shaitania, yeah, not from Allah. Who said it's Jibreel except Khadija? Waraka didn't say it's Jibreel, right? As we read before. Right? Any Muslim? Yeah, don't don't hate Muslims, guys. Please don't don't. No need to insult them, you know. It's already hard enough for them to be in this satanic sex cult. Everything is about sex. Everything is about being naked. Muslims used to go naked around the Kaaba, right? They have to kill those poor creatures who are, you know, the worst enemies of Muhammad. I mean, look at this guy, man. Doesn't he look very dangerous? Come on, man. Guys, if you like today's live show, please download and don't forget to also subscribe and smash the like button and click on the notification bell to receive notifications when we go live or upload videos. Do we have any Muslim? Come on. Oh, someone is a Muslim. I think this is a Muslim call. Let's see, hear what this, this guy has to say. Hello? 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 Yeah. Go fix your connection. Don't steal the Wi Fi of your neighbors, man. Guys, I really could not hear what he was. I think something wrong with his connection. Abdul, call me when, uh, when you fix your connection. Do we have any Muslim? Uh, it must be me or it must be Christian Prince, but I think Muslims do actually steal the Wi-Fi of their neighbors. No, no. You know? Abdul! Don't waste my time, please. Guys, are there any questions in the chat that we can answer for you? Sorry if I'm missing. It's the same guy. Let's see if he'll speak now. <clears throat> Hello? Sorry. Um, yeah. Hello. My microphone's okay. Hi, my uh, friend. Are you a Muslim? Yeah. 
Okay, welcome. What's I was, what do you I was want? the one who called you last time. Yeah. But then I had to leave. Oh yeah, uh, it was yesterday, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, what do you wanna what what do you wanna say today, guy, my friend? Um. Firstly, how was your day been? Like you know. Just... Well, uh, I'm good, man. I'm trying. I'm trying to show everybody that Muhammad was actually nothing but a fake prophet. There is no proof. I'm. I'm. I mean, my friend. I'm doing this for almost 15 years now, right? And I've been asking really very, very important questions. Show me one proof, one evidence. Give me your best shot and prove to me that Muhammad is a true prophet of God. I still don't get an answer from Muslims. Maybe you can help us or what, what, what makes you still believe or accept Islam or accept Muhammad? Go ahead, my friend. Uh, Paul, could you um, repeat the question? Yeah, can you give me your best proof, your best answer why Muhammad must be a prophet of God? Uh, I mean, there's uh, the Prophet wasallam has prophesized um, stuff that has come true. Example, come true. Can you show me one ayah what come what has been come true from the Quran, please? I mean, uh, no, sorry. Um, like as in, they. So basically, example, you're saying you're you're, you're talking Karabala, about for example. you're talking about a about a prophecy, right? That yeah, like uh, he predicted the battle of Karbala, for example. Can you show that? That's new for me. Can you show that for me in the Quran, please? Can you give me the chapter number and ayah number? I want to see it. Uh, just bear with me, please. Okay. Oh, also, the Battle of Karbala being predicted was um, in Hadith, as in the Hadith where the Prophet had predicted the Battle of Karbala. My friend, my friend, you you Muslims say you Muslims say that the Quran is from God, right? It's the speech of Allah. So if if Muhammad is a prophet, then we should at least find one prophecy in the Quran. Give me the chapter number and I number, and we'll go through it. What about that? Uh, okay, brother. Um, let me just uh, bear with me, please. Okay, sure. My friend, I will give you. I will give you a one long year if you can show me one ayah where it says that this is a prophecy and it's fulfilled. Mm. Um, I'll give okay. you. I'll give you ten thousand years. What about that? Is that is that fair? <laughs> I mean, come on, my friend. We are uh, not doing this for for last Tuesday, right? We are doing this for fifteen years, and no Muslim, no Imam, no Sheikh can give us one prophecy that has been fulfilled in the Quran. You know how many okay. years I'm doing this? I'm doing this for almost fifteen years, my friend. Mm. There is no single prophecy. Let me tell you a little secret. There is no single prophecy in the Quran that has been fulfilled. Mm. Not one. I mean, I mean, if I am a prophet and I say, hey, I came to mm. give you a message in the form of Quran. I am a prophet. Shouldn't I at least not give one prophecy that has been fulfilled? In the Quran of Allah? Mm. How, I mean, how can you call me a prophet, man? What's, what's the criteria to be a prophet then? If I can give you a prophecy that has been fulfilled. What kind of prophet are I? I'm a fake prophet then, right? I mean, I, mm. don't you agree? Yeah. Okay. So, that means if we can see one prophecy that has been fulfilled in the Quran, then Muhammad must be a fake prophet. So why are you still a Muslim, my friend? Through uh, evidences, like, um, like through reading and seeing the eloquence of the Prophet's family as well. What? Because if you, because like, um, I've been watching lectures and seeing the eloquence of like the Prophet's family and the twelve Imams and stuff like that. Wow, and that that means that means Muhammad is a prophet because, through his family. As in, well, my friend, I, mean, I come from you, a very you respectful. You, you, you yourself, you sound like a very respectful guy, and I think you have very wonderful parents. And I know a lot of people who come from a very nice family they never have any fights never hated anyone good people um that that that's 
That means those people are prophets. Mm. What's the? I mean, come on, my friend. It's my question is very, very, very crystal clear. Show me one proof, one evidence that Muhammad was approached by God. He was given a message from God. What's your proof, man? Okay, so you can't be serious the... by that answer. You just gave me an answer that has nothing to do with my with my question, my friend. Come on. Mm. Why is Muhammad a prophet? Did Muhammad do any miracle, my friend? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can you show me from the Quran, please? Um. When the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam split the moon. What? When the, when the moon was split in half. The moon was split in half. So are you telling me that Muhammad split the moon in half? Muhammad did that? Well, by permission of Allah, yeah. Really? Can you show me the ayah, please? Guys, we finally found a miracle. After 15 years that I'm doing this, I finally found a miracle that done by Muhammad. Go, show me the ayah, my friend. What is the chapter number? What is the ayah? Uh, Surah 54, ayahs so, 1 and 2. Well, 54. Yeah. 54. Okay. Which ones you said? Which ayah? Uh, one and two. Okay, this is uh, 54. Okay, not 45, sorry. 54. It's fine. Okay, let's read them. This is chapter Al Qamar, right? The moon. Mm -hmm. In the name of Allah, the merciful to compassionate. Okay. The hour of resurrection through near and the moon split around there. Where does it say, my friend, that Muhammad split the moon in half? And when did it happen? According to this ayah, my friend, the hour of resurrection. What does that mean? It means the day, the last day, right? Mm -hmm. In the end of times. Now, mm -hmm. did Muhammad 1400 years ago live in the end of times? No, we are still alive and the end of times did not come. And that means it's not Muhammad who did it, right? So it must be Allah who is going to do that in the end of days. So, my friend, serious question. Did someone lie to you about this so-called miracle? Because clearly... No. No. Okay, so why why what you just said is not true? We just refuted that so-called miracle. It still needs to happen, right? See, the hour, the, the last hour, it's talking about the last hour of resurrection is near, right? Mm -hmm. So the hour is near, right? Al Sa'a is and hour. Split. And the moon has been split. So what's the hour? It's the last end of days, the end of days. So it's talking about the future event. Not now. Okay, can I, not yesterday. Can I not maybe after more than 1400 years in the future. Who knows? I mean, we are not God, right? We are not prophets, we don't know what will happen. So you just gave me something that will happen in the future. So how do you how do you say, how can you say that it's happened by Muhammad? That does, that's a lie. We just refuted that. Can you give me another miracle, my friend? Go ahead. Sorry, can I just um can I just kind of defend that point? Okay. Try to. Okay, defend. Um can I ask you a question? When God in the Bible created the earth in six days and rested on the seventh. It, are you a literalist which believes that, yeah, it was literally six earthly human days, or was it six, uh, friend, most likely what six has this to, What has this to do with with the miracle of Muhammad? What, you want to change topic? When it, no, what okay. I'm saying is... Okay, okay, says the okay. we will go to that. Stuff. We will go to that. We will go. Back to my question. Since we did not... Since you could not give me... Uh, this, this is not a miracle. This didn't happen in the past this needs to happen in the future and we can okay, so basically my friend two. if if we're going to say this happened in the time of muhammad that means it has must have been a uh, eclipse right you know what an ex eclipse is yeah yeah so basically muhammad saw he looked in the sky and he saw the eclipse and he thought this is moons being split but we know 
an eclipse is a, no, a natural event. It happens. It does not mean the hour is near and the moon has been split. No. So I think we can conclude that, that according to you, basically, or any Muslim who believes, this must has been an eclipse and people think, hey, this must be a No, it's, it has nothing to do with this ayah because this is talking about the end of times and the end of times did not happen yet. Right? Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> can you give me another miracle, my friend? Since you, you say that Muhammad is a prophet of God, clearly, Muhammad should have done miracles like Jesus, I mean like Moses, I, especially since he's the best of the prophets. You Muslims say, who, when we ask you who is the best prophet, you say it's Muhammad. Mm -hmm. Clearly Allah must have given many miracles to Muhammad, right? Many mm -hmm. prophecies. So show me one. Um, Surah Al-Rum. Surah Al-Rum. Um, so, verses 2 and 4. This is two two four. Sorry. Uh, Surat al What chapter was that again? Thirty. Thirty. Okay. Surat the Romans of the Romans are vanquished in the near land, and they, after being vanquished, shall overcome within a few years. Allah's is the command before and after, and on that day the believers shall rejoice. By six hundred and twenty-seven CE, the Romans were defeated by the Persians. My friend, my friend, did you just Google it? Did you just use Google to find this one? Be 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 honest with me. Be honest. I mean, yeah, yeah. You, had, you, used, you used Prophet Google, Google, right? So guys, he just. Oh, you can't see the screen, guys. My okay, just sorry, guys. My bad. Let me open the screen, guys. This is the eye that he's talking about. He just Googled it, and he thinks that this is a prophecy. My friend, you know that this is not a prophecy, right? That has been fulfilled. Because it says after a couple of years. Right? Couple of years means in Arabic between three and nine years. But if we go and study history, it's at least 12 to 16, 15 years. So what, do you have any clue? You just Googled it, right? You never heard about this. Bida is Sinin, right? Mm. Couple of years, few years. Look, it says few years. The screen is in front of you, right? Okay. So this is a lie, my friend. This actually makes it worse for Muhammad because this is not true. Historically, it's not true. And not only that, the Romans have been defeated, yes, but they defeated the Persian. This is talking about a historical event between the Romans and the Persians. The Persians defeated the Romans, but then the Romans defeated the Persians back. So it was back and forth, back and forth. It was a war that was very long between the Persians and the Romans. Yeah, between three and nine years, like Phil Herrera is saying in the chat, exactly, right? So actually this is, this is not really helping Muhammad, my friend. Right? Hmm. I mean, the Quran mentions about atoms and like stars and all that. Atoms? Like, I swear by the stars and that run and hide. Yeah. Really? Atoms? Where? Can you show me? Uh, I, I did mean, you did you Google that one too, my friend? Come on. No, no, no. no. I, okay. I okay. Google that one. Which, which chapter? <laughs> Guys, atoms, atoms. Which chapter? Um, Okay, so here's the thing. I can remember the I can remember what it says, but I can't remember the references. Oh, oh, that's bad. So, yeah, um, my friend, there's nothing called atoms in the Quran. Come on, man. <laughs> my friend, my friend, my friend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I invite you, since you can't show me one miracle, no prophecy that has been fulfilled. I invite you to leave Islam. What's, what do you think about that? I mean, Why are you still a Muslim? I mean, if you can't show me one miracle, 
You can't show me one fulfilled prophecy in the Quran. Doesn't that sound very fishy to you? Huh? Mm. And I mean, do you know? Do you know, you know chapter one? We just mentioned chapter one to the audience. Yes. Uh, a question, my friend. You, when we ask Muslims, the Quran. What is what is the Quran? Muslims <gasps> say it's oh, the speech found, of Allah. I found the verse. What? Okay. Okay. I found. I found the verse. You found a verse. What verse? Um, a Chapter. Seven. Which chapter? Chapter seven. Chapter ninety-nine. Ninety-nine. Oh. And what does chapter ninety-nine say? Um, it's it's composed of eight verses. Seven to eight says, "So he who has done an atom's weight of good shall see it, and he who has done an atom's weight of evil shall see it." Can you show me the it word atom? Can you show me the word Adam in Arabic? Let me play. Let me, guys. I hope you will hear it. This website has a voice thing. Okay, let us play. Can you hear it? Guys, can you hear this? Which which word is the atom? Which one is the atom? Uh the rod. The rod? Yeah, the rod. Now now the rod became an atom? You know, you know oh, my friend. Oh sorry, I, I mean um, I don't I don't really speak Arabic that well. You, do, so, you don't speak so. Arabic. No, not really. Let us switch translation. You see, in the time of Muhammad, my friend, there was nothing called there was nothing called atom. So when Muslims they translate, right? You see, every translation that I just selected, it says atom, but that's not true. It's a translation, right? Do you see how many translations say atom? Do you see it, guys? Let us go to... Wait. Sahih International on this website. You see, also this one says atom. Hmm. My friend, I have to uh, go for a second. Just bear with me, okay? That's fine. Just be right back. Guys, I have uh, visitors, so I can't stay uh, much more. I have suddenly visitors. So I have to end this stream, guys. And I'm really sorry, okay? But <laughs> let me say this is not an atom. This is false translation, right? You see? It's a false translation. But we will talk about it in the next live show. I really have to go, guys, because I got visitors.